Now these are the commandments, the statutes, the judgments, which Yahuwah commanded to teach you that you might do them in the land wherever you go and possess or exist or live, that you might fear Yahuwah to guard all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, you and your son and your son's son, all the days of your life. And that your days may be prolonged, which is another word for being blessed. Hear therefore, O Yasharel, and God to do it, that it might be well with you, and that you might increase mightily. It's, see, I like that part right there, brothers and sisters, that you might increase mightily, as Yahuwah of your fathers has promised you. And God is not a man that he should lie. In the land that flows with milk and honey. That's America, whether we like that or not. Here, O Yasharel, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, says it twice, is one. And you shall love Yahuwah with all your heart, with all your soul, with all of your might, which is your strength. Daughter's design, same thing applies. And these words which I command you this day, it's a commandment to do it, you shall be in your heart. And this is also equally a part of the commandment. And you shall teach them diligently, that means with passion, unto your children. And, you, and shall talk of them when you sit down in your house, not your church, and when you walk by the way, your workplace, different places, the markets, wherever the conversation might come up. Like when they're asking you, do you celebrate Christmas? Tell them why you don't. And when you lie down, and when you rise up, at going to bed, waking up in the morning, and you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, like a bracelet or a watch. And you shall bind them as a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And it shall be when your whore, hallelujah, it shall be when your whore have brought you this to this land, which he swore unto your fathers, Abraham, Yesek and Jacob to give you great and wonderful cities which you didn't have to build. Hallelujah. You know, brothers and sisters, first of all, Shalom, Elder GFG. Brothers and sisters, first of all, I, I want to take a moment and just say to my brothers and sisters that when you think about this book, this Torah, our book, our history book, the commandments and the laws, the statutes that are in this book, and, and reflect upon it was so important, or what's in here is so treasured, better said, that you know a little bit less than 2,000 years ago, our ancestors, if you were Yasharel, you know, the real one, not the fake Jews, not them. They loved their identity thieves. They did love it. There's someone say, I'm a real one. No, you're not. You're just a devil. But that's okay. <laughs> All right. But real Yasharel. Y'all will expose you. I'm talking about the, the fake ones, you know, the, the ones who claim to be us, you know, that are not. Hallelujah. But anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> oh, praise Yahuwah. But when you think of what our forefathers went through in in Greece, for example, Rome, early Rome, for example, early Rome, for example, how the church persecuted them, how religion, Islam pers uh, persecuted them, uh, Christianity, or uh, the Christians persecuted them, the Hindus, the East Asians, the Moabites, the Havites, the Hamites, the Canaanites, African nations. We're not going to leave Egypt out of this, are we? All of them, brothers and sisters, thought that this book was so important to our people, to the demise of their people, they were willing to slaughter us to keep us 
from reading it and obeying it. And I bring that out because in these days and times that we end, brothers and sisters, there's a famine of the word. And what I mean by that, I'm not talking about religious channel. You can go anywhere on any channel and find someone talking religion. Talking about some savior of theirs, some Elohim of theirs. But there, you it's hardly one you can find now that glorifies and recognizes the one sovereign Yahuwah. Like you can right here on this channel. And we teach it diligently, just like he said here. Teach it diligently to your children. We have created Wednesday night Tanakh studies, which is another word for Bible study, with the exclusion, the exclusion of the New Testament. We don't teach the New Testament because we have a covenant. We don't break oaths. We're not like those in the book of Zechariah. What is Zechariah 8? And he, uh, 17 says, Yahuwah hate those who have false covenants. He said they are evil and he will lead them or he will set them up for destruction. What is a false covenant? Anything that's in addition to Yahuwah's Torah or anything that diminishes by saying it's done away with Yahuwah's Torah. That's, those are false oaths and false covenant. Or any covenant that you make that goes against Yahuwah's Torah. So if you enter into some deal or some relationship that, that is not approved in this covenant, then that's a false oath and Yah say you better break it or you're going to be judged as one who is evil. See, we studied that in the Wednesday night Tanakh study. And therefore... You know, if you're with us, and this is what the, my reminder for better, for a better word, just my reminder to you to today is about, you know, how are you embracing what we were commanded to do in the book of Deuteronomy, the Torah, when Yah said, love him with all your heart, all your mind, and all your might, all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, your might. He said, frontless, right? I mean, frontless, <laughs> and bind them. Like I talked about watches. Told us that he's one. But he said if we did that, we would possess the land, that the land's there, wherever we were, we would be blessed. He said we wouldn't even have to, to build it and we'd still own it. We'd be the head and not the tail. And yes, that's not applying to us today. But have you given this some consideration as to Why? Other than what the heathen taught us in Sunday school and their, their, their so-called churches, or they so-called in their churches, that somehow now we were cursed. The curse of, of, of Ham when he saw his daddy, Noah naked. And he said, curse you be Ham. Which is a lie. Because if you look at the book of Genesis, Noah did not curse Ham. He cursed Canaan. An African. The Canaanites. Not Shem. But see, these are the plots and these are the conspiracies that David talked about in the book of Psalms chapter 83. That they're confederate against us. What? To promote and to teach us lies. To get us to embrace, again, false oaths and false covenants. Because they knew that all these blessings that I read to you a moment ago, brothers and sisters, would not be applied to us because we would be in rebellion. And that's why they were slaughtering our ancestors in Maccabees. When you read about, you know, 1 Maccabees chapter 1 and 2, 2 Maccabees chapter 6 and 7. I mean, just flat out wickedness they were doing to our people for one reason and one reason only, brothers and sisters, not because of the color of our skin. They were doing it because of who you are, the chosen. According to our book, Isaiah 43, 1 and 2 says that you are mine. I chose you. Of all the people, of all the nations, Jubilees chapter 2 talks about it over there. Verse 21 and 22, you the seed of what? Yisrael. They've read the book. 
the so-called apocryphal books or in many of these books. You go get the King James Version of the Bible, 1611. That's the early King James Bible, the 1600s. The apocryphal books are there. You get the Catholic Bible. Maccabees and Jubilees is in there. I'm talking about the Roman Catholic Bible, the one that's been written for, you know, they said for 16, 1700 years. Their version of it. Or better said, their exploitation of it. Because the book Maccabees, or the book did remind us in Maccabees 3 and 48 that they would, the heathens would take what? Write their image and their likeness in our Torah. To keep us deceived, to confuse us, to twist words. But then Yah is so beautiful and so wonderful. He said, no, I'm going to give you, you know, prophets, you know, after my own heart. They're going to come and they're going to teach you the truth. He said, my servants. He said, I will not hide anything from my servants, the prophets. And that wasn't to big the prophet up, prophet up. That wasn't to make the prophet a big shot. Yah's prophets are not dumb, greedy dogs who never have enough. Again, we taught that on the Wednesday night study. The difference. How do you know if, if, if this person who's in the pulpit or who's on a channel or who's in a community or case, how do you know? If they're teaching you to worship Baal, then they're Baal prophets. Who is Baal? Any other Elohim that's being emphasized other than Yahuwah. And we studied it out. It's sitting right there, Jeremiah 23. But see, if you read Jeremiah 23, you know, without the right precepts and without the right understanding, you could come to as many conclusions as you, as one possibly can. But if you were with us, you wouldn't have. And not only would you have not understood, would you have understood it with clarity, you would have gotten at least 15, 16 precepts to tie right into it. And this I will say too, brothers and sisters, many of you, you haven't been a part of those studies yet. But there are, still, there are individuals who have been a part of the studies. We've been studying every Wednesday night faithfully when it was three and four of us we were studying together. Now they're, you know, 30, 35, sometimes 40. And they call in that 156 number and they mute their phones and they listen to the teaching with their books open. And I'll say this, for those who have been there with us, they will tell you they are growing, they are learning. And if the one opportunity, if they have no other opportunity during the week, they have at least one night of the week. Just like when we were running into those churches on Sundays, they have one night of the week where they can come and do what they're not doing in those churches on Sundays. Literally open up their Bible. And see all the treasures and all the blessings. And guess what, brothers and sisters? They are learning. They are growing by their own admission. Not because Elder DFG is saying it. That's their testimonies. But I understand. And I fully agree. And I understand why. Because that love is starting to manifest itself in their knowledge. Again, love your whole with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. Or better said, all your, all your, your, your body, your soul, and your might. I said, leave them, bind them to your wrist. Wear them like goggles or eyeglasses. And with all the stuff that's going on, especially you parents, you young people, all these things you're confronted with, what's my future going to look like? Where am I going to be able to get the resources to buy my home? When am I going to have my own automobile, a nice one that I can depend on day and night? Will I ever have a family? All those things are concerning things. And if you're in your right state of mind, you should be thinking about those things if you're a young adult. And I'm telling you right now, young people, they are very, very elusive. If you're depending on schooling or you are depending on, you know, some uh, skill, some, some, some craft that you can learn, unless you're smarter than AI, 
Like the old lyric from J. Cole said, you gone, you would have come, you would have gone a long way, but you went the wrong way. And that feeling of hopelessness that some of you are feeling is real. But it doesn't have to be that way. You know, when we were young people your age, we were always told you, if you want something, you better go out there and get it. And there were things to be gotten. We weren't competing with, with technology and that technology needed us. Now today's technology doesn't need you. It's, it's just the opposite. So that's why your mom and dad may have owned things or still own things. The manufacturing plants were all over America. Not everywhere else but America. The schools focus more on uh, cross-genderism and, 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 and reproductive rights and you know, and, you know, homosexuality, the rule of the day, <laughs> tearing down the family, not building the family up, telling you you don't need a family, that you just grow old by yourself and somehow or another you're going to be happy. How are you going to be whole, happy old if you're not happy young? Doesn't just like a... a, a <laughs> A life with that goes off and on. It's not the way that happens. So just because you get older doesn't mean your life is going to get better. Take it from some of us who are older. We know a whole lot of people who are young with us and now they're old with us and their life haven't changed one iota. In other words, not one teeny bit. Blessings don't come just because you live longer. Blessings come with opportunity. And when there's no opportunity, then I can assure you those blessings will come through your hoop. What, what did Proverbs 10 and 20 say? The blessing of your hoop. 10 and 22, Proverbs. The blessings of your hoop will make it a man rich and add no sorrow with it. The blessings of your hoop. Not the blessings of technology. Not the blessings of your school. Not the blessing of your religion. Not the blessing of your pastor. Not the laying on hands of your bishop. You can stand out there on the streets, you young men, and holler with them camps with Nathaniel and, and the rest of, you know, uh, Sahar and all of them. And you're like, you're going to, all y'all competing to be one of them two somewhere down the road. So y'all can be sitting in the house by yourself, you know, talking S-H-I-T about women and their own brothers and sisters. Except for the 144,000. Just waiting for a chariot to come out of the sky to take them away. Like Star Trek. I'm serious too. And all y'all sitting waiting in line. Y'all want to be one of the 44,000. You are being led astray, period. And you don't have to take my word for it. But if you're reading out that New Testament, you're being led astray. And they're getting that, well, the chariot part, they're getting out of Ezekiel. I know where they're getting that from. But y'all wasn't talking about no flying saucers. He said, I'm going to pull my people from the forest. Uh, the corners of this earth from where they're scattered and I'm going to bring them all and then I'm going to fight right here on this earth for them. Beam me up, Scotty, where? That's not what the word says. But again, I'm not going to dispute their doctrine. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to emphasize their doctrine. I dispute it all day long. I repudiate it. It's repulsive. It's ignorance. But unfortunately, because our young people are looking for hope, I understand why some of the young men are over there. And some of you daughters of Zion, you're there or were there. It's time to cut the umbilical cord of ignorance. And Yah has given you a wonderful opportunity right here with us, Wednesday nights, to study Yah's word and study Yah's truth. And then see if it actually applies to you. I'm talking about the blessings. See if it will give you a hope in a future, like Jeremiah said, 29, 19. See, I know the plans that I have for you, a plan to do you no harm, the plan to give you what? Hope in a future, Jeremiah 29 and 11. And your word is true. But you won't get that unless you're doing exactly what this book directs you to do. I wanted to say commands you to do. But Yah's not going to force any of us to do anything. But there will be no one who will be able to say, I didn't know. I'm here to let you know. 
I'm here to remind you that Yah says I'm, that he has a plan for you, hope for you. He wants to give you a good future. He wants to give you, you know, a land that, you know, that you didn't have to purchase. Homes that you didn't have to build. Just read that. And for my older brothers and sisters, those of you, as the old saying go, long in the tooth, or those of you don't have no teeth. Same applies. Do you want to, is this it for you? This, this is how you think it's supposed to end? You and your cats and dogs? By yourself? Just praying, y'all hurry up and come, because when the world, when the crap hits the fan, you know, I, you know, I don't have nobody to help me. It doesn't have to be like that. But except you are willing to, to, to deal with the reality that you're currently in and do something about it, that's the way it's going to end for you too. And the same thing with you men. Sitting around there, you know, pining away. Working and hoping that one day you can retire to get pennies for the dollars you slave for. But that's what it's going to be. Rent. Hide in a mortgage now. Where are you going to live? Assistant living homes? I know folk who live there. Or even worse, someone having to push you around in a wheelchair because now your body, from all of the, the, you know, the foods that you have eaten that were not allowed, has now made your body weak and sickly. If it, happened, have, if it hasn't happened yet, give it time. Because this book says, I will prolong your life. That means he will bless your life. Your life will be strengthened. I'm talking to you older men. So this I say, and pulling this together, is that, you know, I'm, I'm inviting all of you to be with us on Wednesday nights. It's a simple process. You can find the phone number, you know, on the about page. It doesn't cost you anything. We don't solicit you. We don't charge you. We even email you. Not only do we share precepts, we email you the precepts so you can follow up on the study on your own. You got a whole week till the next study that you can look at all the precepts and continue to grow and then see all those things that the book says that Yah will do for us in terms of blessings happen. You know, time is up for ignorance. What is ignorance? Letting people tell us that somehow or another we're cursed. We're never giving us the real reason as to why we're cursed. They love to tell you that you're cursed, that you're supposed to be poor. You're supposed to be the bottom. You're supposed to be a nothing. You're supposed to be, you know, the N-word. Trash, daughters, you know, B-word. Who sent them people? You think your who sent them to tell us that? He didn't. The heathens sent them to tell us that. Taught them their religion in the New Testament and have them come over here and pushing that. That's why our people rejected it 2,000 years ago and that's why we reject it right now. This book clearly says your who is one. That your who is the savior. Your who is the redeemer of our people. And there is none else. Yet they tell you there is. And many of you have bought it and believed it. And even worse, it got us worshiping their gods. That's why they do Christmas. Jeremiah 21 will tell you what are the heathen? They said, learn not the ways of the heathen. What? He said, they go into a forest, they cut it down a tree, right? He said, they decorate it with silver and gold, right? He said, but it's profane. It has no life. It, has, it can do nothing. It can't do good or evil. He said, learn not to do it. But yet, many in Israel will have Christmas trees in their homes or decoration or whatever. Y'all know the drill. But here clearly in the book, it says not to do it. Baal worshipers, church, that's, their, that's your Baal. These pastors, everyone who's teaching you to go opposite of Yahuwah's word, they are the Baal worshipers. B-A-A-L. 
buyout. But then here we are, just a few who love you enough to tell you the truth, even if it hurts. So again, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired, young people? Older ones, do you want to live with your cats and dogs until you die? You want to be in assisted living facilities? That's the best you're going to get? That's what you want? Man, you want to be the, remember your grandpa when you were a little boy? Remember your, them old men we see in our grandma house and our aunts and uncle's house, the older ones, they be sitting in that chair in the bedroom just staring at the TV all day long, waiting for somebody to come and feed them? That's what you want? You want to become him? Because except something changes for the better, you can expect the worse. I'm glad I got a wife. What if she died? Then what you going to do? I'm glad I got children, really. These children are not being taught to take care of you. These children can't take care of themselves. I ease why I'm telling them they need to come. I'm not talking about little children. I'm talking about young adults. The world has changed. We're getting close to the end. But Yah did promise that in the end that knowledge would increase. He wasn't talking about just technology. He was talking about the knowledge of who we are as his people and what he is to us according to this book and what he's more than willing to do for us. And all we have to do is not reject him. And you, when you don't study his word, then you're rejecting him. You don't study his word, then you're not going to see the blessings that he has given us. So yes, the studies are extremely important. Now, I hope you consider what I'm sharing. At the end of the day, it's up to you. But how can I say I love my people and I won't, you know, be diligently reminding you that there is a way out of the mess that we're in. And that the curses will apply to Canaan, not to Yashorel. Israel are being cursed because we're rejecting Yah's truth and his Torah. And we refuse to repent when it's printed out to us. Or we come up with excuses about what you can and cannot do instead of learning and finding out what Yah has to say about what you can and cannot do and what is expected and not expected as it relates to obeying this Torah. Now let's go over to, I'm going to wrap this up. If you don't mind, let's go over to the book of uh, Psalms. And remember what I just mentioned a moment ago about the blessings that Yah says. Hallelujah, what Jeremiah reminded us of as well. Moses reminded of us, reminded us of in Yah's Torah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Check this out. See, David was wise enough, you know, and David was a man. And the reason I say David was wise enough, because Yah said David was wise enough. Yah said David was a man after his own heart. Remember, brothers and sisters? When Saul decided that he was going to, you know, serve Yah the way he wanted, he was going to do what he wanted to do, the parts he wanted to do, and then the parts he didn't want to do, then Yah sent Samuel to tell him, okay, well, you know what? This rebelliousness, Saul, it's, it's not accepted. So I'm going to take my learning from you and I'm going to give it to a man better than you. And that's still happening to many of our brothers and sisters right now. A lot of them started off right, but look at the situation that they're in now. They let pride, arrogance, money, success become their gods. And look at the price they're paying for it. Or some of them just allowed the streets, whoredom, heathenism, drugs, addictions become their gods. Things of the earth that we were supposed to have dominion, those same things that we were supposed to have dominion of that come from the earth, now those things have dominion over us. Alcohol and drugs. At least most of your drugs come from the earth. Alcohol from the earth. We're supposed to have dominion over those things. And look how just the opposite. Those main things have us under addictions, or better said, have dominion over many men today, including prescription. When y'all said healing medicine came from him. Not telling you what to do, I'm telling you what the word says. Hallelujah, but again, here we are. 
But David, a man after Yah's own heart, look what he said. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the wicked. That's all these people who are telling you, follow them, follow this holiday, follow this program, take this ordinance, this mandate. What would Jesus do? Yahushua, uh, uh, Allah, Allah, or whomever their gods are. He said, we don't walk in the council with them. We don't sit in, in, in the, we don't stand up with them. We don't stand for them. We don't participate with them. We don't protest with them. We don't protest for them. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. We don't enter their synagogues, their churches, their mass, their temples, their community. We don't do any of those things anymore. We're totally a set apart people. That's what David has said. He said, but we don't do those things. He said, bless us those who don't do those things, who don't celebrate their pagan holidays and their customs or eat their food offered to the idols. He said, blessed of us who don't do those things, sit at their table. But look what he says here, verse two, he said, but his delight is in the Torah. In other words, they want to study the Torah. He said, their delight is in the Torah of Yahuwah. And in Yahuwah's Torah, they meditate day and night. Day and night. Didn't he say over in Moses say in the morning before, I mean at night before you go to bed, let the Torah be, you know, your, your signet. And in the morning when you arise up, then he see, say that in Deuteronomy uh, chapter uh, six, verses what, five and six and seven. See, David was obedient. That's why Yah said he was a man after his own heart. And that's why David was blessed. No weapon formed against David prospered. Even when David got in the mess, Yah elevated him over that mess. Righteous man fall his seven times, Yah will lift him up. Didn't say we had to be, you know, perfection in terms of body, but he, we sure could be perfection in terms of our love for him. And look what he says. They shall be, David said, if you do this, meditate day and night, and this is what these studies are for. He said, if, if you meditate day and night on his word, learn his word, grow in his word, you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that will bring forth fruit in your season. And your leaf, in other words, will not wither. In other words, instead of you, you know, getting tired and disgusted and frustrated and wanting to quit, he said, no, whatever you do, it's going to be prosperous. So now again, I ask you, do you think it's important now to be, you know, in an environment where the Bible is open, the Torah is open, and that you're being taught and you're studying? If you truly want a future, what did Jeremiah say? Let me, let me just go right over to the word. Hallelujah. But here's David saying, meditate on it day and night. So young people, again, are you, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you afraid of what the future holds for you? Or you feel like you're trapped? Well, I just gave you a way out. But there's a saying, some of you may be familiar with. If you're old enough, it's an old saying. You can't lead, you can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. So we can present it to you, but we can't make you do it. You have to have your own motivation. You have to dil diligently seek this. You have to want this as bad as I want to teach it. Bad as I want you to have it. As bad as I want y'all to bless us for doing it. That's why I keep showing up. But look what it says here. The book of Jeremiah 29, verse 11. I said it before, but let me read it to you anyway. He says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you, says Yahuwah, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Hallelujah. So he says to give you what you want. You want to be blessed. You want to be prosperous. You want to have a family. You want to have, you know, you know, resources to take care of yourself, to be independent. So you don't end up in some old folk home like, like auntie or papa. Dying before your time, getting your limbs and stuff cut off because of sickness, cancer eating your body up. Y'all say, I can take all that evil and remove all that evil away. But you have to put him first and putting him first is not just in words. Putting him first is in action. You have to demonstrate it, in other words. Okay? Okay. Hallelujah. That being said, I want to thank Sister Maria. I want to thank Sister Anita. I want to thank Betty. I want to thank uh, Brother Keith. You know, you know, for the gifts and you know, and for the sharing, and Brother Jonathan.
because the, the giving of men and women like yourselves that again create the environment that I can continue to do what Yah has called me to do. Hallelujah. I mean, Yah has me at the end of the day, but every now and then he said, I'm going to send somebody to hold your arms up, Moses. That's you guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hope you thumb this message up. Hope you share this message. And I hope you join us again. All you have to do is sit and mute your phone for an hour and learn right along with everybody else and then see if those blessings that are promised in this book start to take shape in your life. I guarantee you it will because Yah says so. And he knows everything. He knows the future. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you're in it. For good or bad, you're in it. So be in it for the good. Shalom, Yashirah.